Welcome to this week's Archer's Choice. This week we're going to head up north. Yep, we're going caribou hunting. Yep. And we've got the guys going there. And, and what's really cool is it's not Quebec. No. It's not Alaska. It's Manitoba. It's northern Manitoba with Weber's Lodge. Yep. And, and here's the thing. A lot of people don't understand that there's caribou up there. And there's a very strong herd of caribou. Here's the deal. On any caribou hunt, no matter where you go, it's a migratory animal. It is a migration. And depending on which lake they decide to go around when they're coming down or when they're going up can make a big difference if on If it's that in hunt. your area or it's not. And that's the thing. We want everyone to always get mentally and physically prepared for every hunt. But right. mentally, the biggest thing is when you're hunting a migratory animal is you could be at the right place at the right time or honestly, you could be there for 10 days and not even see caribou. Okay, but instead of being so depressed about yes. not seeing caribou for 10 days, this week's lucky logo is True Glow. True Glow, when brightness counts, count on True so Glow. watch for the True Glow logo. Check out the new Range Rover site. And Rover. we'll tell you what to do at the end of the show with that. So should we head, should we start going cruising for caribou? Yeah, and what's really cool, mm -hmm. it's I think Josh and, and Jess's first time caribou hunting. I know, it's pretty cool, let's go. So in early August, I get a phone call from the office saying, would you be interested in going on a caribou hunt September 1st? And uh, I had about the weekend to decide whether I should, uh, or could clear my work schedule or not. Yeah, I think I could make that happen. So gearing up for this caribou hunt was just crazy. I had so many sleepless nights going into this hunt with this being my first true big game hunt and my first adventure hunt. Josh and I, we were all set. We were gonna meet at the airport and fly out and get to caribou camp. So much excitement going into this thing. There's, there's gonna be so many firsts on this trip for me. There's gonna be my first float plane ride, my first time ever seeing a caribou in the wild. I am super excited and yet at the same time, I'm, I'm pretty overwhelmed. Jess and Josh, we're gonna be in our Nunavut camp. Uh, it doesn't matter which camp you're going to, the trip starts at Thompson. Thompson, you can get there by commercial airline three times a day or you can drive. Uh, you're gonna spend the night in Thompson, the next morning we're gonna bring you into camp. There's a ton of gear that goes into this tiny little plane and, and then it's on the water and you're gonna take off and you're gonna land in the water. But I tell you what, you get up in that plane up in the air and you can see everything and seeing the tundra and, and seeing all of the water and, and everything, it was just, what an experience. After a short float plane ride, we're landing in on our lake. We happen to see camp, we see Russ there, uh, all the guys helping us unload stuff, and uh, our adventure is about ready to begin. Just getting into camp, and uh, smooth ride, everything's ready to go. We're gonna find out where we're bunking and uh, settle in for the day. Well, we just got into camp about an hour ago. We can't hunt tonight. But uh, Russ was telling us that they have spotted caribou just over the hill behind camp. So get all of our stuff ready, wake up early in the morning, head on out, see what happens. That's not considered a hunting day. Uh, that's a day to unpack, relax, sight in your weapons. And that's what the guys did. They shot their bows and their rifles because they were going to be trying to take caribou with gun and bow on the trip. That night, we went out behind camp and, and we're glassing for caribou and, and super excited, hoping to see something and didn't catch a glimpse of any, but tomorrow morning is the first morning of the caribou hunt. So Ralph told me going into this trip that you know, kind of expect to lose a little bit of time to weather. You know, you may lose a half day, a whole day, a couple days here and there due to weather. And, and sure as heck, I'm up to bat that first day and got the, got the old Hoyt out. And Rush, the camp manager, tells us, we're not going to be able to get out on the water. It's just too windy. The water's too rough. The first day that I think Josh was up as far as the bow hunt went, we ran into some weather. And that's got to be expected when you're up in a northern area like that. Uh, spent a lot of time in camp, and once the weather broke, Got to do a bit of a short hunt. Jason, our guide, lets us know, you know, hey, we got a couple good spots. We don't want to go too far from camp. 
just because they really, they're really unsure what the weather's gonna do, but at this point in time, he's got a couple spots picked out. We're gonna go out and do some glassing and see if we can't get on a good bowl. Sitting here glassing from the top of this windy, windy ridge. We got a bunch of younger bull caribou out in front of us. One of the guys in camp actually shot a caribou and the carcass is closer to shore over here. And off from our left comes a little Arctic fox. That is awesome. At the end of the day, it was just either the wind was swirling or it was too windy or the caribou were too far off to take the chance on getting that far from camp to, to see if we could get a shot at them. But the day's still a success knowing just where we're at and the adventure that we're on. And tomorrow's a new day and, and Jess is up to bat and, and hopefully we can get the job done for him. We're just about ready to head out, waiting for Jason to finish up breakfast, but uh, what a gorgeous morning. I'm, I'm pretty excited. I think it's gonna be a great morning. Going after him with my Hoyt today, so it should be an interesting day. Today we're gonna check out a new area. Uh, just north of us here, we're gonna go down a little the narrows and then it'll open up to another lake and uh, it should be a good opportunity. You're just gonna get up high in glass or what? Yeah, high in glass and try and find a good good spot to uh, stock a caribou. Sounds good, let's get going, huh? Yep. Oh, perfect. Oh, we just got to shore. These bulls are making their way. The bigger bull just hooked up with the two small ones. They're making their way up this ridge. So we gotta get, we gotta get moving. So that morning we spot a bunch of bulls and some pretty nice bulls bedded up on top of a knoll and uh, the only chance we had at them is if we could belly crawl to them through the wide open and uh, there was one little bush that we had to get to. So Josh stayed back and Jason and I started out belly crawling and we had to go about 150 yards. He's got a shovel. I don't see any back scratchers. So just before we get to our destination, the point that I think that I can get a shot at these bulls, the bulls start getting up and the biggest one starts walking right kitty corner, like he's gonna cut us at about 35 yards. Well, we got our game plan together. Looks like these bulls, there's three of them. And the big one's kind of leading them. We're gonna back out, go around. There's a little narrows down here. We think they're gonna feed through there. Try to get a better setup on them. We're sneaking along on the shoreline. There's a little timber in between us and the high ground and we're trying to get ahead of this bull. No matter how many times we tried to get ahead of it, we finally, and we finally did, he, he, something wasn't right, he'd turn around and he'd go back the other way. He must have caught a glimpse of me or something, and he just, something wasn't right, he turned and trotted away. We ended up going after those bulls for about another two hours, and we just couldn't quite get on them. We, we were close several times. We're getting in closer. Man, what an awesome experience to belly crawl. Jason and I, I mean, we did. We got within bull range. We just couldn't get the shot off. So after a quick shore lunch that morning, now it's getting into the afternoon and we're heading to a different spot. So we start getting within, oh, I would say about 50 to 60 yards of the bull. Right at that point, I turned to Josh and I said, I think we got a chance to kill this bull. We're real lucky we got on this bull right away this morning. We spotted him. So we have all day, we got the sun at our back right now, so it's not helping us. But I got all day. If it takes me three hours to crawl through mud, water, doesn't matter. I want to get a shot at that bull. He's a nice bull. So when we got within about 65 yards of the bull, Josh decides he's gonna stay back to keep one less person from being in on the stalk, that much less noise, and uh, it's just Jason and I from this point forward. He just bent down. So we got a game plan together. I came to full draw. He made a little noise. Bull stands up to see what that noise was, and uh, the rest is history. Go down, go down, come on, baby, go down. Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, this is awesome. Oh, my God. 
That was the most intense thing I've ever done in my life. Oh my God. Thank you. Oh my God. Hey, give me five on that one. I have never done anything like that where you stalk in on such a big game animal. It took over. And uh, if you've never tried it, if you've never put a spot and stalk on a big game animal, you need to try it because I tell you what, it was the most unbelievable feeling in the world. That was so intense. All the motions come out. We got to within 35 yards of that bull, batted. He didn't go, what, 45 yards? <laughs> oh my gosh. Josh, thank you so much, man. That's awesome. We did it. Oh, look at him. Look at how chocolate he is. Oh, wow. I just got a double shovel. Look at that, and look at that, look at that. Oh my God. I don't even know what to say. Oh my gosh, look at that. He is absolutely huge. We've seen, I don't even know how many caribou. I don't know how many bulls. It's just amazing this place up here. I am the happiest hunter alive right now. I am the Oh my, he is, look at that shovel. I have got to thank Jason, my guide. I mean, he has just been on the caribou the whole trip. Josh has stuck with me and uh, his turn tomorrow, your turn buddy. I wanna thank Ralph and Vicky. This is so cool. Josh, he's a dandy. <laughs> he's a dandy. Wow. Thank you guys so much. You have no idea. We just left camp about, uh, about 10 minutes ago. And before we even got to the little narrow channel that we have to get through, we saw four caribou up on the ridge, three bulls, two, two decent bulls. But uh, Jason thinks he can get us on something better, so we come through the channel, get out in the wide open where we can really see him, and hopefully get on something early this morning. So the last two days, Josh has to get it done. The ball's in his court for the last two days. I'm behind the camera, and the weather changes, and it gets cold, and it starts snowing, and gets really windy, and it's a tough hunt. Uh, the success rate up on a caribou hunt, uh, everybody's seen the old videos where there's tens of thousands of caribou walking by and you're just shopping, you're picking and choosing. Uh, I'm not saying those days are gone, but that's not what one should expect when they come up to a caribou hunt. That chocolate one with the big bag scratchers is probably the best one. It's the chocolate and double shovel. But the other one shovel is bigger, the one at the back. Huh? And we are with it. Realistic expectations should be seeing groups of animals, you know, scattered across the landscape. Some days you're going to see more, some days less, but you're going to see smaller groups of animals moving through. There is going to be those two or three magical days where they're all herded up and they're cruising through, but those aren't actually the best hunting days. The best hunting days are when they're in pockets of 5, 10, 15 animals. You get a chance to compare the animals to each other. Hopefully there's one in there that you like and it's a little easier to stalk in on 15 sets of eyes rather than 500 sets of eyes. Look at that. Can you freaking believe it? Pretty windy day out, pretty rough water, but you know, we're gonna, we're gonna take some chances and spent most of our day on top of the ridge tops glassing and you know, caribou way off, some good bulls way, way off, but just really no good way to get at them. After a long morning, you know, we have some lunch, we go back out, we're doing some glass in that afternoon, and Jason says, you know, we got, we got a couple more spots we can check, but we gotta start working our way back towards camp because the water's getting more rough, the wind's picking up. You don't wanna be stuck out on that water if weather were to roll in, so Jason made the call, and, and Jason's our guide, and we stick with his calls. 
we're cruising along and all of a sudden Jess is like, oh my gosh, there's two good bulls and they're, they're cruising around in this little pocket of timber right off the edge of the shore. So we kamikaze in on the boat and get around top, we get up on the ridge and Jason spots the, the tops of these bulls antlers. So we decide we're gonna, we're gonna make a bum rush for him across this opening. We're gonna chance it. We're gonna take off across this open tundra, hopefully without them seeing us and try and get, get tucked into this timber and give it a vantage point that maybe we can get a shot at one. So this big chocolate keeps circling around and now there's pines between him and us. So, so we skirt around um, to our right and he runs off and then I hear Jesse's he's over here, he's over here. And this, this, this lighter horn one with the big tails comes trotting across the hill and he's coming closer and closer and finally he clears the ridge and, and, and I draw back and I anchor and I get comfortable, I get settled in and I let that beam in fly and let me tell you, that arrow flies and I watched the impact and it pinned him, it absolutely pinned him. It, he spins around and he runs back towards the shore and you can see blood pumping and, and he's running towards the shore and we're hoping he's not gonna go in the water. And, Does that Spitfire punch a hole in them caribou? So to come up on this beautiful, beautiful caribou, he looked huge. Look at the tops. Look at how far back those come. The fronts. He is beautiful. And I'm telling you what, we have worked our tails off the last two days chasing these bulls with our bows. And I bet you we've put in, I, I, don't, I don't even want to know how many miles through this tundra to close the deal on this bull. Jason, I owe you a big one, buddy. I can't say thank you enough to, to everybody involved. I mean, it just to Russ, the camp manager, to the cooks, to the guides, to Jason, to Jess for being there with me to Ralph and Vicki for giving me the opportunity to experience this. I hope and pray that I get to do it again someday, even just to go along and film, because it, huh, what an experience. Unbelievable, the guys what went up there, the Webbers, Josh, yeah, you job. guys rocked up there, and, and to experience that for the first time, you know, we were, we've been blessed, we've done it so, right. so, so often, but to experience that up there, to understand that there's, a thriving caribou herd. That's right. Up in Manitoba. That's right. And you know what I have to say is I have to say is I think we might have a new emotional guy on our team. <laughs> I think Josh might give Freddie the run for his money. No, I think he I think Josh surpassed Fred. You think so? I mean it's over. Really? We have we have the new Cry baby of the team. Yeah. <laughs> this week's lucky logo was True Glow. When brightness counts, count on True Glow. <laughs> so you need to log on to archerschoice.com, click on the lucky logo button, fill out some information. Someone's going to win some great stuff from True Glow as well as other manufacturers. And we'll just make sure we send some Kleenex to Josh. I Kleenex, guess, yep. Right? Scotty's okay. tissues. Thanks for watching this week's show. We'll see you next week. Same time. Same channel. Right, right here, here on, on the, the Archer's, Archer's Choice. Choice. <laughs> I can't believe how emotional, huh? He got a little emotional. Oh, yeah. A little? A little. A little bit more than a little. We might need to send him to a shrink or something. <laughs> yeah, he's gone. <laughs>